Um, and I have found, and this was one of the challenges I've had even like with the taste of honey, that I because I thought, because obviously it came out in 2015, I thought, okay, the information is out there for people interested, but then a number of people, because it's, you know, 300 odd pages, whatever, and the text, it can be quite daunting for a lot of people where they feel, I can't read this. If they're not used to reading, a number of people haven't even read it. And that's what even for myself, it's been, okay, how can I, because at the end of the day, whether you read or don't read, the most important thing is maybe getting the message out. Mm. So then people will say, maybe you need to kind of deliver this in a way that people can um, access it, whether it's in the form of workshops, slides, just simple where they get the point, because you not everything needs to, not everyone needs to read a 300 page book to kind of get the message across kind of thing where you're trying to get out. Um, so that's what I'm, or even like what you mentioned about, and I was thinking, and I was coming to my next question about um, writing maybe smaller books that it's e easy for people to digest. Even the font size, I've noticed as well, that some people prefer some, you know, books where it's more spaced out. Um, and I think some people want to feel like a sense of accomplishment. That's why if there's a book is too thick, you're, I'm like you that to some books I, I buy for reference purposes. I'll read a couple of pages, I might come back to it, and that's fine. Whereas some people, if they feel they can't finish it, they don't want to start it. Yeah. That's even something that I'm even trying to learn and understand. Okay, at the end of the day, if you're trying to deliver like a message, you need to understand maybe the the audience that you may be trying to deliver to and write in a you know really a thick book or with a lot of references for a lot of people that is off point. So I'm glad um, you know some of the advice that you gave because it was really on point. Um, my next question, you and this is something that you messaged messaged me. Uh, I think it was earlier today or yesterday when I shared some um, IG stories about recommended books on Islamic erotology and um, sexuality by Muslim scholars. And you said something along the lines of, um, have I thought about maybe translating some of these books, you know, from Arabic into English or doing like an abridgment? Do you think there's a market for that? And whilst you're answering that question, I'm listening. I just want to get my charger because I'm, my phone is like on, 18% and I love this conversation so if you could answer that question whilst I get no, my charge no problem no problem in terms of whether I think there's a market for that I think definitely so um, because I'll tell you now that look sex is a topic that I think a lot of Muslims are interested in for obvious reasons um, I think that um, but many Muslims are oblivious to as we, and we've spoken about this like the the books that have been written about sex and intimacy by islamic scholars now i can show you that i've got plenty of translations in the back here by but sometimes i've got the same book i've got the arabic version and i've got like two different translations by different people just so i could see like you know what was the different ways it was understood um and the reason that i think there's a market for it is especially amongst scholars and students of knowledge, if it's portrayed as a scholarly book, you will have the next generation of scholars, people that are, you know, I, I don't consider myself a scholar, but like, you know, those people that are coming back from their studies, they're coming back to the UK, and maybe they want to look at uh, materials, they, don't, they haven't opened their mind to looking at, you know, erotology works by Islamic scholars, but when they see an English translation that's available and accessible, um, they might look at that book um, and they might want to convey the message because the Arabic books, from what I know, they're not sold in a lot of the Arabic bookshops in the UK. I haven't come across them anyway, personally. Um, and then what you'll have is that the public lay people will also see these books and be like, whoa, an Islamic, because of, normally a lot of the translations have the uh, Arabic transliterated on the top and then there'll be like a translation at the bottom. Um, of what the title means and stuff and then they'll put like the author's name Jalaluddin Suyuti and they'll put his death date and then when a layman like me or others will see the, that book and will say whoa this was written by an Islamic scholar on this topic so long ago like you know what is this then out of curiosity because there's a market for sex books and we know there is because a lot of Muslims are, are reading books on sex by non-Muslims um, they'll they'll be inclined to buy these now how they of course how well the book flows and what how good the cover is and how well the book is reviewed and received by people and how well it's marketed would all play a big part in 
the success of you know how it's received and how many people buy it and stuff but yeah that's that's my short answer on that on that no no great i loved your answer the reason why i'm i'm i've I've been contemplating it for a while and I think it, well, how can I answer this question? So I've noticed, so like for example, with a taste, it might be the subtitle. I think the subtitle, maybe it wasn't as, it probably didn't give the message across because I still to this day, people ask me like sexuality and erotology in Islam, what's erotology? Um, mm. And even sexuality, because oftentimes, especially nowadays, it's used referring to like sexual orientation, whereas when I was using it, it's referring to the capacity to have sexual relations. Um, that's why I think maybe, and, and even using Islam in the subtitle, putting Islam and like sex or Islam and orgasm, it's a, to a number of Muslims, it puts them off. Mm. And I found that a number of Muslims, even, you know, practicing Muslims will be more comfortable to read a book by a non-Muslim on sex and intimacy. Um, <coughs> rather than, and I've and I've got, um, and I've seen that myself with when I wrote another book that was for general audience, not for Muslims, Kunyaza, that was more accepted. And again, it might be because the way it was written was easier to read by Muslims than a taste of honey. So for me, it was always like a book that I spent that like, ten years to write, blood, sweat, and tears. It wasn't really. You know, people wasn't really like warm into it. Then I wrote another book, but it's you know more explicit. But it's for gen it's not really targeting Muslim audience, and that's the one that a lot of Muslims are asking me about. And I was for me, I was I'm wondering why that was. Is it maybe the, the you know the marketing of the book, the way it was written? It's definitely much easier to read. Um, but I do find that there is even I see it with some posts that like the engagement when it's kind of like Islamic orientated, people are less engaged than if it's just like general. So if I'm speaking about even like the five love languages, everyone loves that. But then if I were to say, and a scholar spoke about maybe like intimacy of love languages, we don't want to hear about that. We just want to hear scholars speak about how to pray and how to um, how to do wudu and stuff like that, how to fast. But when it comes to there's a there's a, so there, that's, that's what I've noticed. There is a disconnect. So that's why I'm 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 in two minds in terms of like I think for scholars for for students of knowledge they would love it. But in terms of like the lay people, the masses, which I think such books should be for, not like so like the so called like religious elites, like learned elite, how to engage with them. That's that's what I'm kind of and I, and unfortunately I've noticed that oftentimes to engage with the masses, like the Muslim masses, in a way, and when we speak about sex and intimacy and women's right to pleasure, sometimes they don't want to hear Islam or the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in like the caption or in the title because they've got an aversion to thinking you know that islam is all about spirituality which doesn't have anything to do with um sexuality and sensuality so that's something that i've noticed in in the marketing process yeah um, which, which is which is quite which is quite strange but hopefully i mean yeah it's, it's definitely something that i will look into or maybe someone like yourself can hopefully can be inspired to, to do that because i think it's important that people again from different perspectives as well can, can share their insights and and because again like i said they'll be speaking from their own experiences what they've seen and how to engage with different um markets so 